Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Hyphen here, and today we're doing a lens battle. The Sigma 19mm f2.8 for the Sony E-mount versus the Sony 20mm f2.8. Both these lenses are designed for the Sony E-mount APS-C bodies, such as the Sony a6300, a6400, a6500, etc. Both these lenses are fast, good for low light, are wide angle, are very lightweight, are affordable, and neither of them have image stabilization built in. Both of them have a seven bladed rounded diaphragm, which is good for decent bokeh when the subject is up close. And both of them have a minimum focusing distance of 7.9 inches. So now that we've talked about what they both have in common, let's get into some of the differences and see which one is best for you. When it comes to construction, both of them are built pretty well. The Sony is a thin pancake lens, which is about half or maybe even a third of the size of the Sigma, which is already small on its own. Both of them are all metal construction. However, the Sigma does have a magnetic focusing system. So when you shake the lens, it does make noise, which when I first did that by accident, I was like, oh damn, did I break it already? Is something wrong? No, that's just how the lens is. So if you hear any rattling, it's part of the focusing system, the way it's designed, and you're gonna hear it all the time. The Sigma does come with a hard plastic, small lens hood, which honestly is so tiny, it's pointless. I don't even see why they even include it. When it comes to aperture range, the Sony goes from f2.8 to f16. The Sigma goes from f2.8 to f22. Both of them are lightweight, though of course the Sony is lighter being that it's way smaller. When it comes to construction, I would definitely go with the Sony over the Sigma just because I don't like that rattling loose noise that the lens makes. Now when it comes to size, it's a toss up between the Sigma and the Sony. The Sony definitely is smaller and thinner, making it more conspicuous, making it less likely for people to harass you thinking that you have a professional setup. Although there is one downside to the size being so small on the Sony 20 millimeter. When I use the setup with the Sony lens on a gimbal, it makes it actually a lot harder to balance because there's not much weight on the front end. When I use the Ziyun Crane gimbal, anytime I try to balance it, I can never get a perfect balance because it's always back heavy. And even moving it as far forward as I can to try to balance it, it still falls back a little. Though when you do push it all the way forward and you turn on the gimbal, the motors do a good job of balancing it even though technically it's off balance. So for size and portability, I would probably give it to the Sony, though if you're using it on a gimbal, the Sigma would be the better choice. But now that we're talking about video use, let's get into one of the biggest flaws that the Sigma has. I've already done a review alone on the Sigma and why it's not good for video. It has a pulsating effect on anything that's not in focus. So when you're using it for video on continuous autofocus, whatever you have in subject is tack sharp, but whatever is not in focus tends to pulsate. And it's due to that magnetic focusing system that Sigma has in that lens. There's no way to fix it, nothing you can do. So realistically for autofocusing in video, the Sigma is completely pointless and it doesn't work. Don't even bother. For video autofocusing with the Sony 20 millimeter, it works fantastic. It picks up faces, it tracks very well, it doesn't do much hunting even in low light. I definitely recommend for video, the Sony over the Sigma. Again, not even because it is better at grabbing autofocus, but because you can't even really use the Sigma for any professional work because of that pulsating effect. Now, when it comes to autofocusing for photos, both of them are fast. The Sony lenses generally tend to be a bit faster than third party lenses like the Sigma. However, that Sigma lens does focus super fast as well. And for photo, I don't really think there's a big difference though in low light still, I give the edge to the Sony 20 millimeter. But for photo, I don't really give Sony the full win. I think both of them are comparable and I think it's a toss up between either of the two for photo autofocusing. Now, one of the other very important aspects of lenses is the sharpness. Now, between these two, there's definitely a clear winner. Both of them are pretty sharp in the center, though the Sigma is more sharp. But when it comes to the edges, the Sony 20 millimeter is very soft compared to the Sigma 90 millimeter. When you bump it to 3.5, 4.0, 5.6, they both get more sharp, but still the Sigma is consistently more sharp than the Sony. So sharpness, hands down, Sigma wins. Now when it comes to vignetting, the Sony has a lot more vignetting, a lot more noticeable than the Sigma. Now you can easily fix that in post, in Lightroom or different editing software, but just straight out the camera, you do get way more noticeable vignetting with the Sony. So I give the winner on vignetting to the Sigma. When it comes to chromatic aberration, both of them are pretty good. 
However, the Sigma has a little bit more. Though, again, that's easily correctable in Lightroom or another editing software. I give the winner to Chromatic Aberration to Sony because it has a little bit less. Both these lenses are great for the APS-C Sony E-mount bodies. Now, when it comes to price, Sigma is about $200, whereas the Sony is about $350. Both are pretty affordable, but there's a significant price difference between the two. Now, I would give the winner easily to Sigma. However, that's only if you're using it for photo. If you're using this lens for video as well, then I can't justify even 200 bucks because it's unusable. Now, when it comes to the autofocusing motor and how loud it is, the Sony is extremely quiet and silent. The Sigma autofocusing motor is definitely quiet as well. However, if you get close enough, you will hear some noise. Again, I would not recommend this for video in continuous autofocus anyways because of that pulsating effect. I know I've brought up the autofocusing in video already several times, but uh, it's just so frustrating. I love this lens. The Sigma lens is so fast, so sharp, so clear, but just... It's just a huge crutch for me, for me doing video. And because of that, I actually returned this lens and got the Sony lens. Both these lenses are great. F2.8, pretty good for low light, decent bokeh when the subject is up close. Both of them lightweight, both of them are very sharp. Personally, I love both these lenses. When I had the Sony a6500, I had first got the Sigma 19 millimeter lens. However, I returned it and got the Sony 20 millimeter because I personally use video and photo. If you're doing any type of video work, I can't recommend the Sigma lens. However, if you know you're doing only photography, I would definitely go with the Sigma lens over the Sony. Not only is it cheaper, but it actually has a better image quality. Now, if you're like me and you shoot both video and photo, I highly recommend that Sony 20 millimeter lens. It's small, lightweight, affordable, and you can use it for pretty much anything. I've used it for music videos. I've used it for landscapes, street photography, etc. It's an awesome lens. And again, I really like that it's small and very inconspicuous. It makes you be able to get away with some great photos in places that you normally wouldn't be able to professionally. If you guys are interested in either of the lenses, the Sony 20mm or the Sigma 19mm, I have links in the description where you guys can purchase it. It doesn't change the price that you get it at, but it does help this channel and you'll also find links for the other equipment that I use. Thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate your support. Please make sure to drop a like and a comment on this video and please subscribe. I greatly appreciate it and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.